Open your Bible with me in Ezekiel chapter 31. Ezekiel chapter 31. I'm going to go as fast as I can here. Ezekiel chapter 31 from the New Living Translation says this. Verse 4. Deep springs water it and help and helped it to grow tall and luxuriant. The water flowed around like a river, streaming to all the trees nearby. Matthew chapter 13, verse 5 says this. You can just take notes and read later because I'm going to move quick to the first few, few verses here. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seeds sprout, sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26 now says this. To make her holy, cleansing her, cleansing, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. Can you say amen? amen? Praise God. The title of my message this morning, in the very few minutes that I have left, is it's too late now. We are far from the shallow. It's too late now. We are far from the shell. Amen. Let's go to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, verse 1. Luke chapter 5. Now I'm going to get into my message. I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining the first few verses. I just want to give you that as my introduction. Luke chapter 5, verse 1 from the NIV version. It says this. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, Jesus was standing by. Say with me, standing by. Standing by. The lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding him. The people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, then the, the one belonging to Simon, and he asked him, he asked him to put out a little from the shore. Put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished his speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water now. Now, Simon Peter, I want you to go to the deep. Now I don't want you to go a little bit. From the shoreline. Now I want you to go to the deep. Say with me, deep. deep. Put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the net. Master, I'm tired. We worked so much. I've done this already. I'm an expert on this. We didn't get anything. Then we're not going to get anything now. It's too late. This is not the time for fishing. I want you to get something here with me. I want you to see something. Simon Peter didn't complain, didn't make any excuses when Jesus told him to put out just a little from the shore. I want you to see something. Verse 3, when Jesus said, gets into the boat and tells him, put out just a little bit from the shoreline. You didn't see Peter say anything. You didn't see him complaining. You didn't see him making excuses. You didn't see him saying that he was tired. You didn't see him anything. Nobody complains. He didn't complain. The other fishermen didn't say anything. But now, when Jesus told him, let's go to the deep, he said, oh no, Jesus. Now, I don't want to go to the deep. We're tired. We have worked all night. We did everything and we got nothing. No, Jesus. I want you to see something. I want you to see something that is extremely powerful. Nobody complains about staying in the shoreline, but not everyone is willing to go to the deep. That's right. That's Nobody complains to stay by the beach, but no, not everyone is willing to go into the shoreline. 
Because in the shoreline, let me tell you this. In the shoreline, you have control. Are you with me this morning? Yes. Yes. In the shoreline, you have control. In the shoreline, you don't need to know how to swim. You're safe. In the shoreline, you have your friends and family with you. In the shoreline, it's easy to run out of the water when the water gets a little rough. So nobody complains. Nobody thinks it's too difficult to stay by the shoreline. But not everybody is willing to go into the deep. Well, when Jesus said to him, just go a little bit from the shoreline, okay. But you see, at the moment, said, Jesus said to him, okay, so now let's go a little further. Let's go over some, some areas, some places that not everybody's willing to go. He said, no. He started making excuses. No, Jesus, I'm too tired. No, Jesus, I don't want to do this. I worked all night long. I want to rest. Let me ask you a question. How many times you told Jesus, oh, no, Jesus, not again. How many times you told Jesus, I, I, I have done this so many times, Jesus. Uh -huh. I'm an expert at this. I know all about this. Jesus, Jesus, let me tell you something. You're the preacher. I'm the fisherman. <laughs> Jesus, you're the preacher. So you deal with preaching. I do it. See, I went there. That's not this. So let's not waste our time. You were sleeping last night. I was working. Huh? How many times you said to God when God told you to do something? And you said, no, God, I did this already. It didn't work. Mm. How many times God said, I want you to give your best offering today. He said, no, God, I did this once and I didn't see the manifestations. Preach. Yeah. Hmm? Preach. How many times God told you to bless somebody and you didn't see the manifestation. Then now you want to tell God, God, I already know. I already did this. I've been there already. I even have a t-shirt made. I'm good at this, God. How many times we make excuses when God tells us to stretch our faith? Mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you're with me, say, I'm here. I'm here. Listen to me. When you stay in the shallow, you do all the work. But when you go... To the deep. When you listen to Jesus and go into the deep, he does the work. Wow. That's good. Amen. I want you to get this. I want you to get this. When you stay in the shallow, it's your responsibility to stay safe. When you're called by Jesus to walk into the deep, now it's his responsibility to do all the work. Was Jesus' idea to go into the deep, now was Jesus' idea to provide. The harvest. But sometimes we want to do what we know best. Which is to make excuses. Because nobody need, likes to be stretched. Nobody least, likes to leave their comfort zone. It's a lot easier to be in control. It's a lot easier to be able to control everything. It's a lot easier... To be able to walk in the, in the dark and without having to put the light on because you're so familiar with the place where you are. If you come to my, if you, if you, let me just, let me just give you this example. In your home, you can get up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom without putting the lights on. But if you come and sleep in my house, you won't do that. The first thing you're going to be is where the lights. Because you don't know the house. It's a lot easier to stay in a familiar place, in a comfort zone. It's a lot easier to go to the restaurants that we know the food is good. I don't want to try something new. What if I don't like it? Hello? Every time I go to an Italian restaurant, what do I order? Chicken parm. Chicken parm. <laughs> Can't go wrong. I want to go someplace where I want to like the food, not dislike. I want to try. I want, to, I want to be satisfied, so let's go to Chicken Parm. It's like when you travel overseas and you don't know where to go, go to McDonald's. You're not going to go wrong. You don't know what to eat? Eat McDonald's. That's it. Burgers and fries. Not healthy, but you will not stay hungry. So everybody likes to stay in 
your comfort zone. Everybody likes to stay in their comfort in their comfort zone. Let's go to verse 6 now. When they had done so, go to the deep. When they went to the deep, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. Whoo, Jesus, I like that. So they, they signaled their, their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled the, both boats so full that they began to sink. This is what I call blessed by association. This is what I call blessed by association. See, the partners were blessed because they were friends with Peter. Did you get that? This is what I call blessed by association. They, they were over there doing their own thing, and God blessed Peter. Now, because they're friends with Peter, they were partners with Peter, God said, hey, come here. I got blessings for you too. Now, both boats were so full that they almost began to sink. So I just want to tell you, make sure you walk with the right people. Make sure we walk with people full of the word and full of faith. Because the same corporate anointing, the same blessing that it's over them can get on you too. The same, the same favor that it's on them can get on you too. So I just want to tell you, stick to me because you're going to be blessed. Amen. 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 Because I know it's in my life. I know the word I preach. I know what I believe. I know what's coming my way. And those that will be, that will be walking with me, those that will be under the, umbre the umbrella of this ministry will be blessed as well. Because when God decides to bless the body, when God decides to bless the head, the whole body gets blessed. Amen. Woo. Amen. I'm more excited than you. Amen. Watch this, verse 8. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees. You see that? Before he said, Jesus, don't mess with this. But now when he saw the miracle, he started worshiping Jesus. He, got, he became, you see, he became super spiritual. You know people like that? They're full of doubt, negativity. You tell them to put their hands up. But Jesus is so merciful that blessed them anyway, and then they get it spiritual. Now they want to praise everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Because now they see the manifestation. But before, no, Jesus, don't mess with me. I'm tired. I want to go home. No, Jesus, this, oh, we're going to get two messages today? Mm. Why are we going to have translation? Why are we going to have Portuguese translation? I don't understand anything he's saying. But when the blessing, when the manifestation, when the miracles start pouring, you're going to get all spiritual. You see how Peter was? Peter is the perfect example of the church. That's why Jesus said, Peter, you are the church. Because we are just like Peter. We talk too much. We're judgmental. We want to punch people. Huh? Amen. You want to kill people? No, not you. Not him. Thank God. Love to preach to holy people. That's why we're like Peter. We talk too much. We act too much. We act on our emotions. One time we don't want to do anything. One time we want to praise everybody. One time we love Jesus. One time we deny Jesus. Mm. That's true. One time I, I'm going to, I'll die for you. The next time I say, like, who's Jesus? I'm with you, Pastor PJ. The next time I was like, I'm not going to church. <laughs> oh, you, you go to Mark's Faith Fellowship Church? You go to Mark's Faith Fellowship I have nothing to do. Yeah. That's us. That's the church. That's Peter. He didn't want to do anything, but when he saw the miracle, watch what he did. He fell on his knees, started worshiping Jesus. He started worshiping God. Watch this, watch this. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he had all his companions, for he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of the fish that they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will, you will fish for people. Now you're going to be a fisher of men. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. Can you say amen? amen? So the lesson here is this. Jesus was preparing them to follow him to start fishing for men and establish the church. This whole experience was a preparation 
for their ministry. This whole experience was for them to understand what Jesus wanted them to do from that time on. Jesus was teaching them from this day on, you're going to be fishermen, but not of fish. You're going to fish men. If you would me, say amen. amen. And Jesus was showing them, you're not, have a, you're not, you're not going to have a good catch if you stay also in the shallow waters. Jesus was saying that if you want to have a good catch, if you want to get the best fishes, you're going to have to go to the deep. Because this whole thing here was not about fish. It was about people. If you want to stay in a comfort zone, Jesus was saying to Peter and, their, and his partners, you're going to get very few things. You're going to get the crowd. You're going to get negativity. You're going to get people talking. But if you want to get good fish, if you want to have big harvest, you're going to have to go into the deep. Listen to me. In the shallow, watch this. In the shallow waters, in the shallow, you will get aggravation. In the deep, you will have a catch for you and your partners. Amen. In the shallow, you get aggravation. In the deep, you get major harvest, a major catch for you and your partners. Listen to me. The treasures of the world is not, it's not in the shallow. The treasures of the world is in the deep. The treasures of the world, it's not in shallow waters. In shallow waters, you'll find junk. That's true. Garbage, debris. In deep water, you find treasure. Yeah. There's things that you will only find in deep water. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Now, I want to show you something. A few more minutes and I'm done. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 47. Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 1. In Ezekiel chapter 47, God shows a vision to the prophet Ezekiel. God shows a vision to him. And this is what he says. Watch. I'm giving you the context in verse 1. In my vision... The man brought me back to the entrance of the temple. There I saw a stream flowing east from beneath the door of the temple and passing to the right of the altar on its south side. The man brought me outside the wall through the north gateway and led me around to the eastern entrance. There I could see the water flowing out through the south side of the east gateway. Verse 3. Measuring as he went. He took me along the stream. For 1,750 feet. And then led me across. The water was up, was up to my ankles. He measured off another 1,750 feet. And led me across again. This time the water was up to my knees. After another 1,750 feet. It was up to my waist. Then he measured another 1,750 feet. And the river was too deep to walk across. It was deep enough to swim in. But too deep to walk through. It was deep enough to swim in. But too deep to walk through. Verse 6. This is very, very, very important. He asked me. Have you been watching, son of man? Have you been watching, son of man? Then he led me back along the river bank. I want you to watch this. God didn't ask him anything in that vision until he got to a point where it seemed impossible. If you read again, the whole time, until verse 6, he said... The man led me into a vision. And I saw this. And I saw this. And he did this. And he did that. And he did this. But at the moment that it got to a point. That the waters were so deep. That he had no options to 
keep walking and no more control. He had to swim to cross or he was going to drown. At the moment that seemed impossible to walk now, God asked him a question. Asked him a question. I want you to get this. God didn't ask him anything until he got to a point where it seemed impossible. Ankle deep, no question. Knee deep, no question. Waist deep, no question. But when it got to a point where walking through was impossible, then the question came. I want you to see this. Listen to me. Maybe you're not hearing God's voice because you're still in shallow waters. Maybe you don't hear God speaking to you because you're still in control. He had a vision until the moment, until he was in control. At the moment that he, he was no longer in control, he heard the voice. Wow, mm, that's good. Preach. Maybe you're not hearing God's voice because you're still in the shallow waters. Where there's too many other voices. There's always a crowd in a short line, in the short line, but you're never gonna see a crowd in the deep. It gets quieter and quieter as you go deep. It gets darker and darker as you go deep. Amen. My God. Good. And God wants you to go to the deep so you can see what He has for you and start hearing His voice. God wants us to get out of the shell. God wants us to get out of our comfort zone and start going into the deep. It's time for us to lose control to the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Verse 7. When I returned, I was surprised by the sight of many trees growing on both sides of the river. Then he said to me, this river flows, flows east through the desert into the valley of the Dead Sea. The waters of this stream will make the salty waters of the Dead Sea fresh and pure. My God, this is so prophetic. Amen. This is so powerful. This is so powerful. Remember the first thing that we read, one of the first scriptures that we read in, in Ephesians chapter 5. says, washing and cleansing her by the washing of the word water in the bible means the word of god and look what look what god says to him the water of this stream will make the salty waters the salty waters of the dead sea fresh and pure there will be swarms, multitudes, crowd of living things wherever this water of this, the water of this river flows. Wherever the word of God grows, things has to change. Amen. Wherever the word of God goes, things has to change. Amen. There will be swarms, multitudes, crowd of living things wherever the water of this river flows. Fish will abound in the Dead Sea. Amen. Do you know that in the Dead Sea there is no life? Mm -hmm. wow. But the word, the water, the living water can go into places where there's no life and bring life. Yes. My God. Amen. But you only see these things happening in deep waters, not in the shell. Wow. Wow, wow. My God. There will be swarms, multitudes, crowd of living things where the water of this river flows. Fish will abound in the Dead Sea for its waters will come fresh. Life will flourish wherever this water flows. Fishermen, now it's talking about you and I. Fishermen will stand along the shores of the Dead Sea all the way from En Gedi to En Galim. The shores will be covered with gnats drying in the sun Fish of every kind will fill the Dead Sea, just as they fill the Mediterranean or the Great Sea. Fish of every kind. Fish of every kind will come. Fish of every kind will fill the Dead Sea. Fish of every kind will, the Fish of every kind will, the Fish of 
every kind, but the marshes and swamps will not be purified. They will still be salty. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow along both sides of the river. The leaves of these trees will never turn brown and fall. Let me tell you something. Where this water, where this word goes, the blessing and the harvest is permanent. Amen. Amen. Did you get that? Fruit trees of all kinds will grow along both sides of the river. The leaves of these trees will never turn brown, will never fall. Will never fall because when where the word of God goes, where the water of the word of God goes, there is permanent harvest. And there will be always fruit in their branches. There will be a new crop every month. For they are watered by the river flowing from the temple. The fruit will be for food and the leaves for healing. My God. I want you to watch this. Verse 10. Fish of every kind will fill the Dead Sea. I want you to tell you this. Get ready to see all kinds of fish. All kinds of people coming in here. Just like Pastor Fabricio was prophesying that people will come. And now we're not going to get the most beautiful, pretty ones and and start rejecting the the things that you don't think is so pretty. I'm telling you, all kinds of fish will be drawn to this place because of the living water that's been preached here. So get ready. All kinds of fish. God didn't call me to be a fisherman in the aquarium. God didn't call me to be a fisherman in an aquarium. God called me to be a pastor, to be a fisher of men in the ocean. That's what God called me for. Let me tell you something. I have a point that I want to share with you. You know why? Because in the aquarium, you choose your own fish. But in the ocean, you get all kinds of fish. In the aquarium, you choose what you want. When my wife and I had an aquarium, we used to go out and spend money buying the fish, the most pretty, the most beautiful, and we had no control of them. Sometimes we get home and put them in the aquarium, and they're they're dead. $300 fish died five minutes later. I want to kill him again. No control. You chose chose the fish because it was pretty. It's going to make my aquarium look nice. It's easy to fish in a prairie. Preach. 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 It's not dark. You have control of the aquarium. It's easy. There's a lot of people fishing in aquarium today because it's easy. You don't need a lot of effort. All you have to have is a little bit of money. And you buy what you want. Mmm. But God didn't call me to be a fisherman in an aquarium. God called me to be a pastor. God called me to be a fisher of men in the ocean. Watch this. Watch this. In the ocean, this is what you get. You get what you like and you get what you don't like. In the ocean, what do you, think it's, you get what you think it's cute and what do you think it's ugly. In the ocean, you get some friendly fish. And you also get some mean ones. If you're with me, say amen. amen. But there's a thing that does happens in the ocean, ocean that does not happen in the aquarium. Let me tell you something. In the aquarium, there is no reproduction. In the aquarium, there is no life. There's only reproduction. The reproduction only happens in open water. I never saw a fish give birth in our aquarium. If I want a fish in there, I had to go out and buy it myself. Reproduction only, only happens in the ocean. Reproduction only happens in open water. In the aquarium, there's no life. In the shallow, there's no life. To, to catch the best fish, you have to go to the deep. Tell your neighbor this now. It's time to go to the deep. It's time to go to the deep. 
Let's go to the deep. Tell them one more time. It's let's go to the deep. Let me tell you what happens when you go to the deep. When you go to the deep, you will drown your doubts. When you go to the deep, you will drown your fears. Criticism. Negativity. Unfaithful people. You know why? Because again, like I said in the beginning, not everyone is willing to go beyond the shoreline. Amen. Negative people will not go to the deep. Shallow people will stay in the shallow. If you're with me, say amen. amen. If you stay in the shallow, people, watch this. If you stay in the shallow, people will convince you that the deep is too dangerous. Don't take risks. They will, convince, they will convince you to give up on your dreams. They will convince you not to take any risks. They will convince you not to walk by faith. Shallow people will keep you in the shallow. People in the shallow will stop you. People will suffocate you. Remember when we start reading, Jesus got in the boat because the crowd was surrounding him. He said, I have to get away from the crowd. In the short line, people will control you. But when you go to the deep, it's only you and Jesus. You depend on him and you're no longer in control. I remember as a kid, we went to the beach one time in Brazil, and the waves in some places, some days can get very rough. And my brother, we were both swimming, and all of a sudden a big wave took my brother far back. Where my brother had, he couldn't walk anymore. It was too deep for him. We we're both kids, about 10, 11 years old. And my brother started to get desperate. And when you start getting desperate, that's when you start drowning. And I remember an old man. I was starting to get desperate for my brother too because I was safe. But I was seeing my brother desperate and I couldn't help him. I couldn't get there. And even if I did, maybe both of us would die. I remember seeing my brother desperate. And I remember an old man in a big surfer board. He swam next to my brother and he said, stop. Just stop and the wave will throw you back to the front. Just stop. So this is what's so amazing. When you go to the deep, you lose control. If you keep trying to swim, you keep to draw, save yourself, you will drown. So good. But when you go to the deep and you say, it's time to stay still and let God take control of this. In the deep, you lose control. You can give God a big praise. In the deep, you lose control. You depend on God only. Let me tell you what you're going to find in the shoreline. In the shoreline, you will find debris, waste, garbage, drunk people. Annoying people doing stupid stuff. Distraction. Crowd. This is what you find in the shoreline. But in the deep, it's only you and Jesus. Amen. And God said to Peter, let's go to the deep. There's things, there's harvest that you're only going to get in the deep. Amen. You stay here, you get distracted. You stay in the shallow, you get degrees, you get garbage, you get junk, you get the rocks. You hurt yourself. <clears throat> but if you go to the deep, you will find things, you will see things that you never saw before. Now you will be able to hear my voice because you're no longer in control. I want you to stand to your feet.
Watch this. This is powerful. Watch this. Watch this. According to Quora.com, most shark attacks happen in shallow waters. According to Quora.com, most shark attacks happen in the shell, not in the deep. Most shark attacks happen in shallow waters like waist deep, where sharks are more likely to find feed, such as seals and birds. Most sharks also enjoy the murkiness of shallow waters. Humans surfing or floating in shallow waters resemble animals offshore going for a deep. Watch this. It's better to be underwater in the deep with the sharks than floating on the surface looking like a prey. Did you see, if you watch Discovery Channel, people that swim with sharks? People swim with sharks are in the deep, never in a shell. And sometimes you see so many sharks swimming around them, and they even touch some of the sharks, cameramen. And you say, at least I say to myself, how come the shark's not eating them? But you see sharks eating people, attacking people by the shoreline. You may be surrounded by sharks in the deep. But remember something. You are not going to be in the deep alone. The same way that you may, be, you may be surrounded by sharks, you will be surrounded by Jesus. Because he's the one that told you, Let's take a walk to the deep. Maybe you're tired. You're tired of being beaten by sharks your whole life. Because you're in a shell. It's time to get into the deep. I believe when the shark sees people swimming in the deep, he said, I can't eat him. He's one of us. <laughs> Is this far? That's one of us. In a shell, that's food. My God. The reason why I wrote this message it's because of a song that many of you have heard. Lady Gaga, where she wrote the song Shallow. And in the chorus, she says this. Watch this. I'm off the deep end. Watch as I dive in. I will never meet the ground. Crash to the surface where they can't hurt us because we're far from the shallow now. Criticism, backbiting, cannot reach you when you're in the deep. And I looked at my wife when we first heard this song. I said, this song is about us. We're far from the shell now. Yeah. It's too late to go back. Cash through the surf, crash through the surface where they can't hurt us. We're far from the shell now. It's more dangerous to be in the shallow than to be in the deep. And Jesus is calling you and I today, let's go to the deep. Let's go to the deep. God called the prophet and said, let's go to the deep. 
My, oh, I got my feet wet. It's not enough. Keep going. Oh, I got the water by my knees. Not enough. Keep going. Oh, I got, I got, I got the water on my waist. Not enough. Keep going. I can't, I can't walk anymore. I have to swim. Now I can talk to you. Now it's only you and me face to face. You can't recognize God's voice among many other voices. Did you get anything today? Did you receive anything today? And I want to pray for you today. I know we went beyond our time and this is an unusual service. But if you think it's time for you to get out of the shallow and walk into the deep, I want to pray for you. I want you to come to the altar. And I don't want you to wait for your neighbor. I'm talking about you. I'm asking you if it's time for you to walk into the deep. It's If you want to get out of the shallow. If you're tired of the experience of the shallow. I want you to get out of your seat and come here so I can pray for you. Because it's time to get into the deep. It's time to have a face to face with you in Jesus. It's time to have experiences. That only Jesus in the deep can show you.